I'm having Charles. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Carrie Ward, Director of Fostering Success Michigan. Welcome. I'm here today with Charles Rosier from uh, Michigan Student Aid, and he's going to talk to you about uh, financial aid resources for students with experience in foster care. So he's going to cover information about the FAFSA, tips on filling the FAFSA out. He'll talk a little bit about tips, and he'll talk about the Fostering Future Scholarship. Um, all of this is part of our uh, FSM Statewide Virtual College Fair Resource Kits or Toolkits. Um, I would encourage you to watch all of the videos included in our toolkit prior to our event on October 21st from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, to make the most out of the college fair. Um, you can check other resources by visiting the FSM website and just using the search bar to search college toolkits. Um, and you can register for the fair uh, by visiting the FSM website again at fosteringsuccessmichigan.com and clicking on the news and events page. So thank you so much, Charles, for being here with us today, and I will turn it over to you. All righty, great. Thanks for having me. And again, as Carrie stated, my name is Charles Rosier, and I am with Michigan Student Aid. Uh, I primarily am an outreach analyst with the Metro Detroit region, but I am also the program coordinator for the Foster and Future Scholarship. So today I am going to be taking you all through a presentation that pretty much is going to talk about institutions to consider. So what schools should you be considering when you're thinking about uh, the financial aid that you have in order to apply to those schools? Also, we'll go through the financial aid process. We'll talk about the FAFSA. We'll talk about some of the federal programs that are available, particularly for students who have experienced foster care. We'll also talk about some of our state of Michigan programs and how to access those. And then we'll end it off with Q&A. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. What institutions are you all considering? So the first option that you all have is community colleges. And community colleges are generally schools that offer two-year programs. Uh, they begin with licensing programs. It goes up to certifications. And then you can also earn a two-year associate's degree at a community college. And the average cost for community colleges here in the state of Michigan is around $11,860 per academic year. Now, again, the cost of tuition does include your tuition and fees, but it's also going to include your room and board, your cost of living, things of that nature. Next, you have public colleges or universities. Now, public colleges or universities, they generally offer four-year programs, um, and you will find some that actually do offer associate degrees, but not many, and then uh, you'll also find some that offer graduate programs. So a graduate program is like a two-year program after you've earned your bachelor's degree, which is the uh, four-year program. And then lastly, you want to look at private colleges and universities. Uh, the average cost of attendance at a private college or university is just under $40,000 per academic year. So a public college or university is going to be a lot more affordable. As you can see, the average cost is only around $23,809. So you will save a lot of money by uh, considering a public over a private. But the private colleges generally offer the same type of programs. You'll have some that do have some two-year degrees, primarily four-year degrees, and then some that also offer uh, graduate programs. So types of financial aid. We briefly want to talk about types of financial aid. Free money is the main type of financial aid you all want to be applying for. Scholarships and grants. Scholarships is merit-based. So that pretty much means that you'll have to uh, demonstrate a certain SAT score or you'll have to demonstrate a certain GPA, things of that nature. You may have to even write an essay in order to earn that scholarship. Grants, on the other hand, are strictly need-based. Therefore, if you demonstrate the need for grants as a student uh, who has experienced foster care, then most likely you're going to be eligible for some of those grants. And we'll actually go into detail about some programs a little bit later. And then you do have the opportunity to work while you're in college. So 
uh, most traditional college students these days do have to uh, work part time while earning their degree. Uh, college has just uh, gotten kind of expensive over the years and it's not realistic that a student uh, will not have to work at all unless they're on some type of full ride or something of that nature. And then lastly, you have borrowed money, which is loans. Um, but for students who have experienced uh, care, foster care, pretty much there are an abundance of programs out there in order to help you all succeed and meet the cost of attendance and uh, earn your college degree. So I highly recommend that students that is, have experienced foster care stay away from student loans. If it's a critical thing that you must take them out, the federal government does offer student loans and you would want to uh, look into those over looking into private loans. But again, uh, there is a lot of free money out there for students that have experienced foster care. So next we'll talk about the FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And the FAFSA is the main way for students to apply for scholarship and grant programs that they may be eligible for, whether it's coming through your uh, state government, federal government, or even some private third party organizations that you uh, submit an application for scholarships with, they may also wanna see that you've completed the FAFSA. So the FAFSA is available at uh, fafsa.gov. And this is pretty much what the homepage looks like. Uh, for incoming freshmen, you're going to go to new to the FAFSA process. So you would click uh, start here and then you would be uh, basically taken to uh, the application page. So basically, uh, this talks about FAFSA deadlines. Each state has their own deadline. Uh, Michigan has a priority deadline of March 1st for our state of Michigan programs, but um, I'll talk a little bit more uh, detail about that later on. All right, so the FAFSA, just a couple of facts about it. It can be completed online. It's primarily available online. Uh, there is an app for it. It's called the uh, My, uh, My Student Aid, if I'm not mistaken, but it's spelled with a Y versus a M-I. Um, so you can look into your app store if you would want to uh, complete your FAFSA on your mobile device. Uh, the FAFSA is completely free, i.e. free application. So pretty much avoid being scammed. Make sure you're not paying anything when you're uh, signing up for the FAFSA. Uh, the FAFSA must be completed each and every academic year. So if you plan to receive financial aid each year in college, you'll have to be sure to complete the FAFSA every year it becomes available for the following academic year. Alrighty, in the state of Michigan deadline for MCS and MTG uh, is March 1st again. So the 2021-22 FAFSA becomes available October 1st. So in a couple of weeks here, the FAFSA will be available for the next academic year. Alrighty, and then most students who have experienced foster care is going to be considered an independent student. So if a student has experienced any of these, if you are at least 24 years of age, if you're married, if you're a graduate or professional student, if you're a veteran of the armed forces, or if you're a member of the armed forces, or if you experience time in foster care in particular, uh, then any of these situations will allow you to submit the FAFSA as an independent student. Uh, also, if you have children or dependents, if you are an emancipated minor, if you were ever homeless or at risk of being homeless, it will require documentation, but you could also submit the FAFSA as an independent under that category. And uh, it will be determined by the Financial Aid Administration uh, if you have like unusual circumstances or things of that nature. So students with special circumstances uh, may be eligible for professional judgment, 
it basically allows you to work with the financial aid office at your college and they'll do a deeper dive and look at your information to see uh, if they can allow a financial aid award package to be reevaluated. So if you had change in income or household size or dependency override due to family breakdown. So this may be an area that is particularly applicable to students who have experienced uh, foster care. Um, if you're just in one of those situations where it was kind of rocky at the home, and even if you were not necessarily put into the foster care system, you could still be considered. So uh, you would definitely just want to work with your college if you were not in one of those categories, but still wanted to apply as an independent student. Alrighty, and next we'll briefly talk about federal aid programs available for students who have experienced care. So these are three primary programs that are going to apply to students for sure uh, that have experienced foster care. Uh, federal grant aid does not need to be repaid. Federal loans must be repaid. So uh, pretty much uh, most independent students or all independent students actually uh, is going to be eligible for the maximum uh, Pell Grant. And we'll talk about the amount of that here soon. The Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant, that's pretty much just a smaller version of the Pell Grant that the federal government sends directly to colleges and allow those colleges to divvy out those funds based on a uh, student's uh, need. So we do highly recommend that students get their application with the college submitted early as well as get their FAFSA submitted as soon as it becomes available. That way, if there is any additional funds at the institutional level, you may be able to get some of those. And then federal work study is just a uh, program that the federal government has. Uh, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about that, but it allows you to work on campus while in college. So some Pell Grant basics. Uh, to be considered for the Pell Grant, students must complete the FAFSA, and again, that has to be completed every year. Uh, families that make less than $26,000 are going to automatically receive a zero EFC, which means they would be eligible for the maximum Pell Grant. But again, if you are an independent student, uh, especially coming out of high school, you're definitely going to be making less than $26,000. And again, you're going to automatically be eligible for that maximum Pell Grant as well. And the maximum Pell Grant for this current academic year is actually $6,345. So the Federal Work Study Program, it pretty much is a part-time employment program that allows students to find a job on campus. So the federal government will send money to the college to actually pay you with whatever on-campus job you are able to uh, find. So you will not receive those funds if you are eligible for work study, if you don't go out and find a job on campus. They don't set you up with the job, anything of that nature. You do have to actually look for employment on campus yourself, but uh, it would make you a little more likely to be uh, accepted or you know picked as an employee due to the fact that that program won't have to pay out of their own uh, funds because the federal government has already sent the institution funds to pay you. So I highly recommend work study if you do need to work uh, while in college because any program that you work for in college or on the college campus, they're going to be a, a lot more understanding that you're here to earn your education. So if you were working some random job off campus, you know, uh, let's say busing tables or a cashier or anything like that, your manager may not be as understanding if you need to take an evening off or a shift off because you had to study or you had an exam coming up or things of that nature. So I do highly recommend work study over an off-campus off job. All righty. And then next we'll talk about 
the scholarship and grant programs that are available through the state of Michigan, uh, particularly for uh, students who have experienced foster care. So these four programs are the main programs that will be applicable to a student that may have uh, experienced foster care. I'm not going to go into detail about all of them. You have the Children of Veterans Tuition Grant. You have the Foster and Future Scholarship. You have the Police Officers and Firefighter Survivors Tuition Grant. And then you have the Tuition Incentive Program. The most applicable, obviously, is the Foster and Future Scholarship and the Tuition Incentive Program. So we'll do a deeper dive into those programs at this time. So. The Foster Future, Fostering Future Scholarship is really straightforward. It provides awards designed to assist former uh, students who have experienced foster care with eligible uh, college expenses. So if you were in foster care on or after the age of 13, then you may be eligible for the Foster and Future Scholarship. Unfortunately, it must be due to abuse or neglect um, but we still encourage any student that have experienced foster care to go ahead and submit the application. So there is a special application outside of the FAFSA that is associated with the Foster and Future Scholarship, and it becomes available March 15th of each academic year. So uh, the application is available in the My SSG Student Portal. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and how to access it as well. And it is also available on our website, which is michigan.gov forward slash MI student aid. The deadline to get that application submitted to our office is June 30th. So again, that period is open from March 15th through June 30th of each academic year for the following academic year if a student plans to enroll and the maximum award per academic year is $3,000. Um, a thousand of that uh, is, well, I guess it's broken up into 1500 per semester, I should say that first, and then a thousand of that is for tuition and fees, books and supplies, and 500 of that is for room and board, and that's 1500 per semester. So next, we'll talk about the tuition incentive program. So this is a scholarship or a grant program available to students who have received Medicaid, which is health care provided by the state of Michigan. So if a student has received um, Medicaid for at least two years within a three year consecutive time frame between age nine and when they graduate from high school, then they are most likely going to be eligible for the tuition incentive program. Again, there is a special uh, application associated with this as well. This is a one-time application though. So once the student gets this done, they don't have to worry about doing it annually, how you would have to do for the Foster and Future Scholarship. And it's important to make note of that, that for the Foster and Future Scholarship, you do need to submit that application each academic year during that open uh, application period. Um, but once the student gets the TIP app in, they're all set. The deadline for them to complete that application is August 31st of the student's graduating year. So for the class of 2020 graduates, due to COVID, that deadline has actually been extended to August 31st, 2021. So they get a full additional year in order to get that application completed before they forfeit their eligibility. They must complete high school or earn its recognized equivalent prior to age 20. But if a student is attending a state approved earlier middle college, then they would have until age 21 in order to get the application completed. But then they would have to contact our office directly in order to do so. All right. Um, they must begin utilizing TIP at a participating institution within four years of graduating from high school. So you only have four years total to start taking classes 
once you are done at the uh, high school level before you actually forfeit your eligibility for the program. And then all remaining benefits are forfeited after six years. So pretty much you get six years total from the day you graduate high school in order to take advantage of the tuition incentive program. And you would have to make sure you start using it within four or you would lose it. TIP works in two phases. So phase one covers the cost of tuition at the standard and district rate at participating Michigan community colleges and up to $250 in mandatory fees per semester. Uh, if a student was interested in going to a Michigan independent college, so some of those private colleges that I talked about, uh, the TIP program would pay out at the average community college and district rate. And for last academic year, that was $113 per credit hour. And they will receive up to $250 in mandatory fees per semester as well. Now, again, the student would need to be enrolled in a two-year program, even if they were at one of those Michigan independent colleges. And we did say that some of those four-year schools do offer two-year programs. And then, student wanted to go to a public university, uh, TIP will provide the cost of tuition at the lower level resident rate and up to $250 in mandatory fees as well. Um, students must be enrolled in a certificate or associate degree program in order to access phase one. That is really important. So there are only four Michigan public universities that actually offer associate degrees. And that happens to be Northern Michigan University, Lake Superior State, uh, Michigan Tech, and Fair State University. Those are the four primary public universities that do offer two-year associate programs. And a certification program must be a minimum of one academic year. An academic year is a period of at least 30 weeks of instructional time. So if the certificate program you were interested in was less than 12 months or uh, less than 30 weeks of instructional time technically, then you would not be eligible to have TIP pay for that uh, program. Alrighty, phase two. So phase two is really straightforward. It provides tuition assistance not to exceed $500 per semester or $400 per term up to a maximum of $2,000 for credits earned in a four-year program at a Michigan degree granting college or university. So uh, phase two must also be completed within 30 months of completion of phase one requirements. And that pretty much means once you either earn 60 credit hours or you earn your associate's degree, you'll have two and a half years in order to utilize phase two before your benefits are forfeited. All right, the TIP application process. So the application can be completed online in our MySSG student portal, um, or they can also complete it by calling our customer care center, and that number is 1-888-447-2687. So the deadline is August 31st of the student's graduating year and before age 20, uh, just to reiterate that. And also they have until 21 if they attended an earlier middle college, um, but those students must call our office directly. And then and just a last note again, that all class of 2020 graduates do have one full year extra in order to get that application completed. And it says to note that TIP eligibility letters are no longer required. Used to be a process where you'd have to show your eligibility letter to the college you plan on attending that is now no longer a thing. Okay, so next we'll just talk about what all our state aid programs pretty much require in order for a student to be eligible. So you must have Michigan residency, you must be a citizen, a U.S. citizen, permanent residency status, or approved refugee status. 
Um, you must complete the free application for federal student aid, and you must complete that each and every academic year. Um, and then all of our aid programs must be used at an approved Michigan college or university. So you could not take your Foster and Future Scholarship or your Tuition Incentive Program Scholarship outside of the state of Michigan. That would only be applicable at a Michigan college. But the federal Pell Grant that we spoke to that's at the federal level, that can be utilized at any college in the U.S. Students must be enrolled at least half time. So that pretty much means that you have to be taking a minimum of six credit hours and uh, normally on average each class is about three credit hours so you will be taking a minimum of two classes per semester in order to receive the scholarship. A student must not be in default on the federal student loan and you must graduate from high school with a high school diploma, a certificate of completion, or its recognized equivalent. Once students begin to receive financial aid, they do uh, have to maintain what is called SAP, Satisfactory Academic Progress. Uh, and those standards are institutional standards that will be set by the college you plan to enroll at. All righty, so the FAFSA deadline for Michigan Competitive Scholarship tuition grant is March 1st. We didn't speak about those, but those are just general uh, scholarships that you all should be aware of, uh, not necessarily uh, applicable, particularly for uh, youth that have experienced foster care. But for all of our state aid programs, you just must have to have a current year FAFSA on file. And that deadline is pretty much the end of the academic year you'll be submitted for. So it's not really a deadline on it. And then we do assume that whatever college you listed first on your FAFSA, that is the college that you plan on attending. And that is where we'll send your uh, scholarship money to. So you can update that by either updating your FAFSA, you can log into the MySSG student portal account and update it, or you can call our customer care center and we'll get it updated for you. The My SSG student portal. So next, I just want to briefly go over that. Students can create a My SSG student portal account at michigan.gov forward slash MISSG. In order for a student to create an account, they must have their social security number and either have a current year FAFSA on file or have a TIP record, meaning that they may not have completed their application for TIP, but they are for sure eligible for the program based on the Medicaid record. Alrighty, so what can students do in MySSG? All of those programs that I spoke to that are particularly for students that have experienced foster care, all of those applications are actually available in the My SSG student portal. So it's really important that students um, create that account. You can update the college on file, as I just spoke to earlier. You can update your contact information. You can view eligibility status for all of those programs. And you can actually see if the state of Michigan has sent those payments to the college that you listed where you're attending. Um, so if you're working with the financial aid office and they're saying they're not seeing the scholarship or they haven't received payment yet or anything of that nature, you can actually uh, follow that for yourself within the MySSG student portal and you can email us directly. And then lastly, I just want to speak to some of our My Student Aid uh, resources. So if you go to our website, you click on students and families, that's where you'll find a lot of the uh, resources available for students. Um, we do have program details for all of the aid programs that I spoke to, so you can find detailed information regarding those and how to apply. Uh, we do do webinars that kind of break down, you know, some of the programs that we have available. Also, external resources, we do list the U.S. Department of Labor. They have a scholarship tool. Uh, I highly recommend students check that out and some other resources as well that will just help you get prepared for college. You can connect with our social media. And then also we have a scholarship search tool on our website. So pretty much it is a place-based scholarship 
Um, you just select the county you live in and then it'll generate scholarships applicable to students who live in that area. And that is pretty much the presentation. Where is the last slide? Okay, uh, I did want to speak to our social media. So we do have Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So if you guys want to connect with us on any of our social media platforms, uh, just at my student aid and my student aid. All righty, and that is my presentation. So thank you all for your time today.